Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles, and welcome to Blender for Noobs, and welcome back to our character creation series, and welcome to part five of that, which is setting up IK, or setting up inverse kinematics. So what is exactly inverse kinematics? If you don't know, you're going to love it. Um, so I showed you before, you know, your character, generally, you, if you're in pose mode down here, you know, you might be in object mode, you select something, you know, one of these handles, and it doesn't do anything and rotates your whole, whole character. But once you have one of, you know, this green here selected where you can see these um, handles, you can come down here, or you can do like a, um, I think it's control tab. Yep, control tab brings you to pose mode, and you can select one of these handles and move them around. You can, you know, move his head around a little bit if you want to. And, you know, rotate the neck. Hey, I'm pretty cool. And notice also if you grab this middle here and you rotate them, rotate him this way, it's actually rotating the entire character. But I'm going to show you something really cool. Okay, so this is what we're doing here. This is called FK. This is forward kinematics. And all of this means is when you are grabbing this handle and you're moving it, it is forwardly moving down the rest of the arm, you know, all these pieces. If you go down to here, there's nothing left down here, so you're only moving that hand. If you go right here, you are moving that arm and the hand, so you can see that anything that you, um, you move up here is forward to where, you know, whatever, it's, whatever bones it's connected to. The inverse of that is, say, uh, if I select the hand and I move it around, it's not just going to move the hand, it's going to go back up the human, it's going to go back up the arm, and it's going to also move all the bones to, you know, that are connected to the arm. So why is, why is that important? Well, you'll see very quickly here. So I'm going to choose T on the keyboard to get our tools menu here. And you'll notice that you have these tabs over here and you want to choose the MHX2 runtime. And I'm going to collapse this just so you can see all this. Now, if you don't see the layers in the FKIK switch, just make sure that you select um, the controls here. Because if you're selected like the human, then you don't see it. You just see this set up in the license. So just select one of the controls and you should see the rest of this. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is select layers. And what I usually do is I start turning on the IKs and turning off the FKs. So just going to click on the IKs, click on the FKs to turn those off, click on the IK legs, turn those on, and FK legs to turn them off. Now that's one part of the thing that you got to do. The next thing you got to do is go to the FK IK switch, and you need to actually tell Blender that you're turning the, these on. So come down here and you can do the arm or the leg or both. So I'm just going to do both. I'm going to say, you know, click on it and it changes the IK. And you'll notice that the arms are kind of changing a little bit when you click on them. Okay. And when you do that, I'm going to T to get rid of that menu. When you do that, your character is going to look somewhat different. You're going to start to see like these paddle things around the hands, paddle things around the feet. And you're also going to see some of these um, pieces sticking out here. And those are all uh, IK controls, inverse kinematics. So, so how does this work? Well, select one of the paddles on the hands and you can go ahead and you can rotate the hand. You'll see how that's rotating. But when you to choose G to move, you'll notice that it's not only moving his hand anymore, it's moving his entire arm, which is really cool. It makes it so much easier to pose your character. I mean, much, much, much more easily. So you can kind of, you know, play around that, see what that does. Um, you can also see when you select this piece here, you, you can see you have controls over it. What this is, say if you take this piece and uh, let's kind of put his hand on his hip or something here, if I can do that. Okay, and I want to move his arm over. Okay, so 
can even do something like that. Okay, so you can see it looks like his hand is kind of on his hip, but it looks like, you know, this arm is maybe too far back or something. You can grab this control right here and you can kind of adjust that a little bit to where you think it looks most natural. That's not going to do too much, but yeah, you can even move it back. So it's, it's sort of like, think of these squares as sort of like a fine tuning adjustment. So you can uh, do a little bit more with it there. Same thing for the legs. You can actually come in here and let me grab his foot. And let's say I'm going to go into three view G and I'm going to move this up and I got that stupid uh, square there. Let me see if I can delete that thing because it's going to just bug the heck out of me. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't screw anything up here. Well, maybe it will. Uh, maybe not. Okay. So we're back into pose mode here. And so you can kind of move his leg around like this. And note also, if you select this piece, this like shin thing here, if you rotate that, that kind of rotates the leg around is what that does. And you can, you can use G or R, G, uh, you know, grab or R rotate to mess around with that. And then you can see if you grab this, you, that's where you get those spine tuning things that you, you know, if you need that specific, specific pose, you can grab those and do that as well. So, and as you can see, it can get very much out of shape <laughs> if you go too far with it. But overall, it does really a great job in posing your characters. Okay, so that is inverse kinematics. And by the way, um, if by chance you grabbed uh, one of the hands or feet or anything and you're trying to move it with a G key and it's not even going anywhere and you're getting mad and frustrated, well, remember what I said in the beginning, part one, go to file, go to user preferences, go to file here and make sure that your auto run Python scripts is checked. It must be checked in order for this to work correctly. Okay. And then if you check it and it still doesn't move, just restart blender and it should be okay. But anyway, that is something that I've run into in the past. You know, I've, I've tried to remove my model and it's like, it would not move. And you think what's going on. And then you got to research it and figure out what's happened. So, I mean, just so very easy to move your model. So you'd like, you know, if you want to have him do something specific, you know, you'd set a keyframe in your animation and then move him and set a keyframe, you know, however you do your animation. I don't do anything, you know, to tell you the truth with animation at all. Um, I used to play around with that a lot in like Maya, but uh, it's to me, it's so it's not something that I need to really do very much. I mean, I like to sometimes make, you know, if I do a spaceship or something, I like to make it fly through space or, oh, check him out. He's he's getting getting jiggy with it or something. Oh, by the way, <laughs> uh, notice that when we had the inverse kinematics turned on, let me put this thing kind of back where it was, sort of. Sort of. Okay. Remember this piece right here just moved when it rotated the whole model? Well, in inverse kinematics, it does this. Uh, anyway, so that's what that does. But yeah, I don't do a lot of animation, but I know people, you know, I know people are very interested in that. And, you know, maybe they want to do fight scenes where the characters or whatever. Here's a good example. See how I put um, his hand on his hip sort of like I didn't really even try, but I threw it there and see how his shoulder is kind of screwed up here. Well, you can grab this and you can kind of like straighten that out a little bit, see what it does, see if it helps. And also if it doesn't, you can actually come in here and grab one of these bones and you can kind of uh, kind of mess with it and see if it will fix that 
you know, you could kind of play with it. I'm not doing a very good job of it right now, but <laughs> it's, it's getting worse, I think. But anyway, that kind of shows you what can be done. Um, you can kind of grab these bones and change, change those as well. And be in inverse kinematics. It gets kind of tricky with these bones, but yeah. Um, I wonder if I can, I've never tried to like rotate these. I don't know. I don't think you can, but let me see. Maybe you can. No, you can't rotate them. You can just G move them. So in his case here, I think probably the best thing to do would be grab his hands and say, well, it's too high up on his hip and then move it down a little bit and then keep kind of tweaking him around until it's right. Now, as I showed you before in the forward kinematics, you have these finger controls, which is really nice because uh, to have all of your characters fingers spread exactly like this is kind of fake looking. So you can grab the finger controls and G move them or R rotate them and, you know, make it look a little bit more natural. See how his thumb's kind of sticking through his uniform here. You can move, you can move that out. Or usually, what I do is I try to get his hand uh, rotated as normal as possible first, and then I move his his fingers around. But I created a scene where uh, you know it kind of looks like somebody's breaking out of something, and the security guard is grabbing their arm. So I use the fingers to. You know, you can rotate these and tell the finger to like, you know, curl around whatever it's grabbing. So that's that's really cool. Really nice fine tuning controls. And remember, uh, I chose in Make Human, I chose the rig with no toes. Uh, so you don't, you know, you don't have any individual controls here. I never really tried the one that doesn't say no toes. So I'm assuming that it has like controls like for the finger sort of. Um, there is no reason at all that I would need that. So if you happen to need that, just, you know, use, don't use the one with no toes. Use the rig with um, just the, the default rig, I think it is. But you can try, you know, play around with that from make human and export the rig that that would work with. Okay, that is all there is to setting up IK, inverse kinematics. So in the next tutorial, part six, what we're going to be doing is setting up his uh, eye nodes so that they look um, better than what they come in as. So I will catch you in the next video.